And welcome back to the Stan Simpson Show. Final thoughts and advice for the governor about how to create jobs. We're joined now by Themis Clarinus, state representative, Derby, uh, vice chairman of the Connecticut Republican Party, and also a rising star, a, a deputy uh, Republican leader in the House. So she's here. So now you have the big summit going on. You guys have given some pretty good points. Themis just joining us. Jerry, a long business person. He owns a computer company. You can see any man who brings a whatever this is, an iPad or a notepad to a TV show, you know you run the computer company. <laughs> you have a... <laughs> Adrian Cochran, uh, CEO of the Urban League Greater Hartford. All right, jobs. Themis, you're here now new. If Malloy brings you into his office and says, give me two things I can do right now to create jobs, your two points would be what? Well, in fact, he did bring us into his office the other day. Um, we had a leadership meeting, Republican and Democrat, and we were discussing what he was interested in doing in the special session at the end of the month. And our staff and his staff sat down actually last week and, and gave him our multi-page and A bunch of them, right? Ideas. What, which, one you, which one do you... Are you most passionate about? Because you're also a business person too. You have a, mm -hmm. um, a, law, firm? a law firm, right? So you're running a business also. So what two things are you most passionate about? You know, it's hard to say two things when, because when there's so many ideas. And the reason why we came up with so many, and our staff did a great job. In, you know, in addition to my colleagues, with that, is that we want to say here is is a menu of sorts. Okay. Let's try and put them together in a way that's most efficient for the state of Connecticut. You know, whether it's you know we've been very uh, supportive about the fuel cell technology in the state of Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And we have such great Why? resources because we have a brain trust in this state and in this part of the country. And it seems as if we're not taking advantage of that. Because I think fuel cell has been talked about for years, mm -hmm. right? The, the perspective or the prospects. And we still have that same conversation. So what is preventing that from moving from talking about it to investing in it and making some money? Well, clearly it's an investment. And at this point in time, it's not like we have a lot of money to invest, which we should have probably done years ago when we had the extra money. And what do fuel cells do? A lot of folks say, what exactly do, can you explain in layman's language what exactly are fuel cells and why are they something we should even think about? Because they're more efficient and they're more environmentally safe, you know, in the most simple way possible. I mean, we could have on 90, 95 the rest stops, fuel selling, fuel cell, uh, you know, filling stations, so to speak, to, so you wouldn't be using gasoline. We could be talking about maybe 100 buses in the state. Um, we could make Bradley one of the most environmentally friendly and efficient airports in the country. I mean, we have the resources right here, and we have the brain power in this part of the country to use. You know, Bradley seems like to be like low-lying fruit, the airport, right? Every city you go to, the airport is vibrant. I mean, what's happening, they have obviously some businesses there, but it seems like more can be done to make that a thriving sector, the airport. What can be done? What, what, what are we missing there at the airport? Well, it just seemed like the whole management of Bradley in the last 30 years that I've been in Connecticut has been suspect. And now I think the governor has appointed a new authority, I think it is, that it, it appears that that concept may, be, may work. Mm -hmm. Cause the airport should print money, it right? People come money. in, they right. got to eat, they got to get, print you gotta, gotta get a cab, they have to go, to, you know, it's, it, should be a, it should print money. Right. Now, that means one more bullet point. So fuel cells is one. One more thing that you think uh, you would uh, keep as your top priority. Well, our top priority, and it has been the top priority for a long time, I mean, it's, we've been supportive of the governor in regard to this issue because we seem to be, for the most part, on the same page, the Republicans, the Democrats, the governor's office. Well, give me a but second our, bullet point. We have the few. second bullet point is the fact that you can't say I raise taxes the highest amount in the history of the state of Connecticut and put burden upon burden on business. Burden yeah. upon burden. And then say, but you know what? In September, we're going to come back, and now we're going to work on jobs. Because as we know, government doesn't create jobs. So decrease the burden, the tax burden on businesses. So fuel cells, tax burden. Jerry, businessman, two bullet points of the governor. I love that, that second one. Decrease the tax burden on businesses and provide business with some long-term incentive to hire people. We just don't have any incentive. Like what? Like... More tax credits, more... More tax credits, more R&D credits, more some kind of credits that will allow me to say, okay, I've got two or three new contracts. Let me bring on two or three new people, and I know these two or three new people are not going to cost me a trillion dollars. Do we need to incent the banks now, too? Because it seems to me, like you said, the banks are sitting on this money. They have these these restrictions, but do there need to be incentive for banks to begin lending money again and do it? Well, I think that's a whole different conversation okay. that we All can right. have. And I started the conversation with the whole Dodd-Frank piece and how that's creating much more compliancy on community banks, just like this on a large mega bank. So the same things that a mega bank has to do, a small community bank has so to do. So reducing, maybe eliminating some of the compliance issues, relooking that, is that something that needs, needs to be done? I would certainly think that that would be a very big help okay. in, in helping 
business and banks loosen up the credit access. Agent Cocker, two bullet points. Governor has you in. They've been so well stated, but I, I really hang my hat on the incent the businesses. And it kind of goes back to the conversation we were having just a bit earlier. What is the incentive right now? You know, and it's sort of a rhetorical question in this moment, but really, there really isn't one. It's and the opposite, actually. I, it's the I opposite, so. right? I think I so. Don't I don't mean so. to interrupt, but no, I mean, it's we have a $250 business entity tax. I mean, there are people that have companies that have one person working for them. Right. They should yeah. be paying, I mean, you know, there are, there are things, I mean, we have a ta film tax credit um, program in the state of Connecticut. That, that's a great program, but when we, we have people closing their doors on a daily basis, right. you know, not being able to feed their families, and that's what this, that's what this state and this country is built on. It's not, it's not the big, huge corporations. It's the people with five employees, with mm -hmm. under 50 employees. That's what this is about, and that's what we have to help people. We have to help people. We have to give them the tools to I saw, flourish. I saw House Speaker Jim Amon the other day. He would disagree about that, that uh, credit for a film company. That was his baby, and he would tell you, you know what? It brings in goodwill to Connecticut. People come in. It gets a good brand. But let's talk about in the one minute now, the African-American community. We have a 9% employment rate, unemployment rate for the general population. For African-Americans, it's double that. Absolutely. Urban League, President, what are some of the issues there now when you have that kind of disparity? That's a major problem. What kind of things can be done to deal with sectors that are uh, more pronounced hit by this recession? Well, of course, the, the, the economic downturn also affects the businesses like the Urban League, and the Urban League, to be sure, is a business where we are providing those employability skills, where we are taking people who may not have worked a legitimate job in their entire lives and trying to prepare them to go out and to compete in, in the workforce. And again, jobs, 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 incentives to businesses and corporations to hire, notwithstanding, if you're not prepared. If you're not prepared, we have lots and lots of people. You got to run five seconds. All right, we have people who've become very dependent on system. Okay. All right, they're very system savvy, and suddenly those systems are being yanked from under them. All right, we'll leave there. We'll have you guys back to wrap it up. Thanks to all our guests: Jerry Long, Oz Grable, Demis Claris, and Adrian Cochran. Don't forget to catch our show 24/7 at ctnow.com/stan. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. For the good folks here at Fox Connecticut, I'm Stan Simpson, Tim Lammers, and the Morning News is next.